Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway here to bring you a Monday edition of the KSO show. A little bit more expedited today because uh, that's kind of how Chris Kleiman lived life with his press conference this afternoon. Just over 15 minutes, pretty speedy considering uh, how sometimes those can go for 30-ish minutes. And uh, it's because the you know you have a bye week. There's not a game fresh in everybody's minds to really talk about. That was addressed last week. And then you get down to business, and there's not a ton to go on about, especially when uh, you're probably thinking you're you're one of the fortunate ones that didn't have to deal with uh, the carnage of this past weekend, and and you could celebrate the bye week a little bit more. Uh, but Drew, what what were some of the things that stood out from Chris Kleiman today? I know he addressed some of the injury stuff. Um, two kind of key guys right now at positions that have probably impressed in a good way just because the expectations had kind of drifted a little bit lower, but Braden Lofton and Uso Sayamalo had uh, injury updates from the head coach. Yeah, I think that's like the probably the the two or the I guess that the, the, you could just call it one. The one real important thing to really note was – that Chris Kleiman said that Uso Sayamalo, he feels good about playing and it might be at just in a smaller role, but, or it could be kind of him playing as much as he had been before, but hearing that he was going to be available surprised me. I think it surprised everybody really. Uh, Cause when you saw his injury, it, it, it looked like it could be a long-term kind of thing. And that was kind of the vibe that everybody had post Oklahoma state was okay, how bad is it? Because it looked pretty bad on the field. Uh, so to hear that he is coming along and progressing well, even though he didn't do anything during the bye week, it is very promising. Uh, Braden Lofton's update wasn't as promising. Still sounds like he's probably a week or two away. Uh, but even with Lofton being out, you saw Will Ancio play really well against Oklahoma State. Garrett Oakley had another week to really nurse some of his injuries and Will Swanson has caught two touchdowns. So it's probably not as big of a deal uh, that Lofton probably won't be able to go, but having Uso Samalo is just massive and, and to not, and to potentially not even miss a game. Yeah. that it, I, I, It's significant because I think the last two weeks, Uso Samalo has probably played his best game, certainly of this season. And then you consider where, uh, his the necessity of his role is like it's probably getting close to being the the peak performance he's given at K State, which is interesting given that people kind of assumed that he he wasn't going to do much this year because Damian Elolio had had passed him by and everything else. So it's good news on that front. Uh, and like you said, with the tight ends, K State they got plenty of options there, so it would be nice to have your full resources. But this team right now. They could probably put anybody at tight end. Maybe they could put Uso Samalo at tight end, and I think Connor Riley would be able to find a way to get him open and get him a touchdown and make him a part of the offense. So uh, I'm not overly concerned on that front, but it's it's something that you don't want to deal with for a long time. You would like for the injury stuff to clear up there and and be back to full strength. Uh, in terms of what Chris Kleiman said about getting ready for Colorado, what were your takeaways there? Because obviously this is a team that – is pretty top heavy with their talent. And that's been the downfall of Colorado last season. And, you know, in their one loss this season against the only good team that they've played so far. Um, what did Chris Kleiman think of the challenge that was going to be presented to them? Yeah, he was very complimentary of Colorado. Like he is with most teams. You, you don't really hear Chris Kleiman ever talk down an opponent or say anything real negative. Like, the, the way that Chris Kleiman talks and it's about every opponent, it, it just seems like they are kind of like world beaters, like could win the Super Bowl if they were in the NFL. So you kind of got to hear that. Uh, he had high praise for Shadur Sanders saying that he should probably be the first quarterback off the board and in, in the NFL draft. I'm not sure if I necessarily agree with that, but that, that is what uh, Chris Kleiman said. Uh, and then lots of praise for Horn as well as Travis Hunter of Colorado. I believe he called Horn phenomenal and, and Travis Hunter, one of uh, the front runners for the Heisman Trophy at this point. So very complimentary of Colorado and in the challenge that they possess to K-State. And 
really talking about Shadur Sanders talking more about kind of like they did with Noah Fafita that Sanders doesn't want to beat you with his feet when he runs he's looking to extend the play to throw it deep and so Casey needs to be strong and be patient in their rush lanes and then also need to be able to stick with their man and man-to-man coverage and to not get sucked up because Sanders will beat you over the top with his with with his arm instead of trying to beat you with his feet. Yeah, I, I think it was notable how complimentary Chris Kleiman was of what Colorado has, and, and he should be because there's no denying that the, the guys at the top of the roster present a lot of challenges to people, and, and that's where – it's one of those things that if you're not focused and you're not ready to take care of your own business in every way, you're going to get burnt by those guys. In, in some ways, I would throw this out here because I always thought that this was the case, but this is like a – I'm trying to think of the, the right arrow, really over the, the stretch run because I always thought they had good skill position guys. But this is kind of like uh, one of the bad KU teams on steroids where for some reason KU always seemed to have – a running back and like one and a half receivers that were going to end up getting drafted or playing in the NFL for a handful of years. And you're like, how do they have these talented guys, even though they're one in 11 right now, like what's going on, but they had skill posi- position guys that if you were the university of Texas and you went into that game and you weren't taking it seriously and you were overlooking them, well, you're going to look up at the scoreboard at some point and go, Oh crap, we got, seven minutes left and we're losing to these guys. Like we're, we're going to lose this game. And Colorado is that to a greater extent where overall they're, they're clearly a better team than those really bad KU teams were, but the talent that they have is also far superior. there. like, KU didn't have a first round quarterback playing for them. Colorado likely does in Shadur Sanders. They don't have a first round, whatever in Travis Hunter. Um, that that's a big deal. And then, you know, you mentioned all the other receivers. So that, and K-State has struggled in the secondary this year. It's probably the most glaring weakness on their team right now, which is not what we anticipated saying, you know, in the middle of the season, but here we are. And that's a struggle point for K-State. And that makes this matchup with Colorado a lot more difficult than what it probably should have been or, or would have thought to have been. And another part of that is Colorado has played better this year. Well, they haven't played good teams, Nebraska is the best team that they've played on the road, and they lost that game pretty handily. Um, they are four and one. They deserve credit for that, and I think that they are showing signs of being a slightly better put together team last year in terms of their mental makeup this year. So uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see how K State kind of tries and, and manages everything right there. Before we go any further, I want to remind everybody that K-State is going to be heading to Ireland to kick off the 2025 football season against Iowa State in the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Game tickets can be secured now through a travel or hospitality package. All-inclusive travel packages include premium game tickets, luxury hotel accommodations, and exclusive K-State welcome experience and more. Game day hospitality packages include premium in-stadium hospitality with food and drinks and premium game tickets. Don't miss out on the trip of a lifetime. Book your package now at cats2ireland.com. That's cats, the number two, ireland.com. So, all right, Drew, uh, anything else from Chris Kleiman relating to the present of K-State football? Because I know there's one little nugget that you want to talk about at the end about the future of K-State football, but the here and now with K-State, uh, what else did you get from Chris Kleiman today? Yeah, I think that you kind of got to hear uh, K-State has started to find an identity. And I think that that's what we've been kind of waiting for offensively all season long. We got to see it really take place against Oklahoma State. That DJ Giddens is their identity. And, and how DJ goes, K-State is going to go because he can do so many things. He can run by you. He can run through you. He can catch the ball on the perimeter. He can kind of do a little bit of everything. And because of that, he is kind of the heartbeat of this team right now. And the offensive line has been so good run blocking that it makes K-State really hard to defend uh, when they are running the ball that well, because then you can't over, you can't put a lot of guys in the box because K-State was able to throw the ball really well against Oklahoma State now. So you kind of got to see that on tape. 
So I, I think that you're seeing K-State really lean into being able to run the ball and run the ball well. And, and I think that that is helping them win games. And, and it kind of goes back to what Matt Wells said in his first press conference, that K-State's going to throw to score and run to win. And, and K-State's really done that to a T through five games so far. Yeah, I mean, the, they are they are throwing to score uh, a little bit. They probably need to throw to get yards a little bit better. Uh, but they they took some steps in the right direction against Oklahoma State with that. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how it plays out for them this weekend. All right. Uh, in terms of the future nugget on K State, something that Chris Kleiman said kind of caught your ear there, which ties back into what you and I talked about the very first day, essentially, of this football season when we got a look at K State where we kind of noted some of the habits and the situations that a certain guy was being put in during practice. So uh, I'll let you go from there. Yeah. So Chris Feynman was asked about which of the younger players during the bye week was really starting to make strides and make waves. And at first Kleiman kind of avoided the question saying that there was, it's hard to just point out one guy, but then he went in and, and answered it and said Blake Barnett. And it was important for Blake Barnett this bye week because he wasn't able to do anything during spring after getting hurt in his state championship football game. And that injury just kind of lingered throughout the entire spring. And fall fall camp was the first day that he really got to learn K-State's offense. And during the bye week, he was able to do some stuff K-State related instead of doing scout team. And he really caught Chris Kleiman's eye about how well he had been practicing and really handling himself. And I, I think that's something that you really want to hear, even though Avery Johnson is a very special, special talent at quarterback, that it that you have somebody that you think that you can rely on in the future. And, and if it's it could be it could be any time that Blake Barnett could have to go into a game because of injury or anything else so if you have somebody that's young that you think is going to be ready in a future stud i think that that's really important and especially at the quarterback position because that is the most important position on the field yeah and uh blake barnett he'll uh, get to have a little homecoming this weekend going back to the state of colorado uh as he's he's traveled for every game with k-state uh part of the, the quarterback crew there so uh, that's that's encouraging news because throughout the run of Barnett's after really after his commitment, you started to hear more and more about how people really liked him. A lot of good athleticism, hearing better stuff about the throwing ability, and it's kind of grown there. And then you get that to to tie into it, you feel like you have uh, at least one player on the roster currently that would be ready to take the mantle from Avery Johnson in two or three seasons. So uh, interesting to to kind of note there. The, the crazy thing about Blake Barnett still is that he has probably a notch or two below Avery Johnson athletic ability, but has like 30 pounds on Avery Johnson. So for him to be able to be that athletic and be able to spin the ball now and, and really seeing that passing game come along, I think is, is really important. And something that, again, if you have a young freshman quarterback that is making waves, that, that, that's a good thing. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, that'll do it for us today. We'll be back again tomorrow to talk a little K-State and uh, continue throughout this week as it builds up for the road trip to Colorado for the Wildcats. Also a reminder to everybody, and we'll talk about it a little bit more in depth during the recruiting show this week, but we will be in Goodland on Friday to watch K-State's five-star tight end commit Lincoln Cure. So we will have plenty of stuff coming at you this weekend and also throughout the week. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching the KSO Show. Back again tomorrow after a hopeful Royals W tonight in Yankee Stadium. Yes. <laughs>